Hello, and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Every week, Talking Heads will bring you in-depth insights and analysis through the lens of sustainability on the topics that really matter to investors. In this episode, we'll be discussing investing in environmental markets and the opportunities arising from the transition to a more sustainable economy. I'm Andy Craig, co-head of the Investment Insights Centre, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Hubert Arts, Deputy Chief Investment Officer for Listed Equities and Senior Portfolio Manager at Impacts Asset Management. Welcome, Hubert. Thank you, Andrew. I'm delighted to be on this podcast. Yes, to be completely transparent, listeners should be aware that BNP Paribas is a minority shareholder in Impacts Asset Management. Impacts was founded in 1998, and since then, Impacts has pioneered investment in the transition to a more sustainable global economy. And today, Impacts is one of the largest investment managers dedicated to this area. Can you talk us through, please, the path that Impacts has walked during this time and the role of investing in listed equities benefiting from the transition to a more sustainable economy? Ian Sim, the CEO, started 25 years ago with the vision that when you build portfolios, you should look at companies that have a sustainable business model. What it means is that as a company listed on the stock exchange, you can make profits, but it's the way you make profits. So we have created over the past 25 years, a universe of companies that offer a sustainable environmental solution, but also the way they conduct their business is up to standards that we like to see. So we have gone from 250 names 25 years ago to over 2,000 names that are listed on stock exchanges across the world that we classify as sustainable or environmental solution providers. On top of that, we have seen over those 25 years, a lot of investors such as BNP following impacts and saying, okay, that's a very interesting proposition and we want to work with you and it's been very successful. So over that time, our client base has significantly grown and more importantly, we have had the opportunity to hire more people in the listed equity team so we can cover more stocks, we can do more engagement with companies, we can analyze the companies much better on what is their business model, what are the sustainable products, what are the environmental solutions these companies provide, how are the quality of the management team, how is the incentivization of that management accordingly to the sustainability targets they set themselves. If we look a little bit more at the investment universe that you invest in, over the last 20 years, investment opportunities within the environmental market space have grown substantially. What are some of the key drivers within these markets and how do you at Impacts seek out companies that will benefit from these trends? We have six areas that we can quickly run through where we find sustainable companies. The first one, anything to do with energy related to energy efficiency and renewable energy. What are the big drivers? Well, you can, of course, first use renewable energy. Secondly, within your premises, you can make it far more efficient. So you can install LED lights, energy efficient air conditioning, heating, ventilation systems, more insulation materials and build more sustainable housing and commercial residential real estate. If we then go to the next one related to efficient transportation, we've seen significant pollution in inner cities because of transportation, but also shipping and airlines need to do their bit. We can invest in companies making components or electric vehicles, batteries, charging stations, but also is hydrogen. A huge opportunity here for the heavy transportation industry, such as shipping and heavy trucking. And then another bucket, sustainable food. 25% of calories available consumption is never consumed. So where are the wastes and package? Secondly, transport. And thirdly, food waste. So we can invest in companies helping more efficient harvesting with software systems, with smart irrigation, more efficient software to help supply demand within the food value chain and make sure the food waste is better for the environment, i.e. use natural ingredients in food. How can you make energy out of food waste by 
composting it. Then we have a digital infrastructure. We need to upgrade the grid. We use far more efficient servers. And so we can have companies that provide efficiency drives within the digital infrastructure area. Then another bucket is the resource optimization. What we should do and, and are trying to do very hard is to avoid single use products, specifically within the plastics. And if you cannot avoid it and you need to use plastics because it's light, then make sure that you can reuse or recycle it or replace uh, single use plastics by fiber based or even cotton based products. And then the last one is related to the water value chain. We break it down over three areas. One is the infrastructure, anything to do with building building out water facilities, treatment and the utilities. The big drivers on that front are really in the developed countries. We have still a lot of water leaking away around 15 to 25 percent in major cities. That is not good because you use a lot of energy treating water and then it just leaks away. Of course, urbanization needs more water supply. We have the quality of water as an issue. So that was a long story about the six big opportunity areas that we have developed. That was very comprehensive. And you mentioned several times policy, which is clearly absolutely critical in driving forward the environmental transition. There are constantly announcements about policy and budgets that will impact the sectors and the companies operating environmental markets. Can you give us some examples of supportive policies for the companies that you invest in? We have seen that accelerating over the past few years, I think about three years ago already when COVID happened and there was a lot of stimulus needed to keep economies going and we could see all that stimulus going in, in sustainable areas. So that was a positive message. In Europe, we talked a lot about the Green Deal. We had the US Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act and the Jobs Act. And then China just said, we want to have a lower carbon economy by 2030. 30, but more importantly, by 2050. Let's go a bit more detail. So within the Green Deal, what is important is sustainable projects. That means more onshore wind, more offshore wind, more solar, but also what can you do within the buildings and housing? You can have heat pumps. So heat pumps is a very important word because it lowers the carbon footprint for buildings. Pollution happens in cities because of the heating ventilation. So if you can make that a more efficient by using heat pumps or ground sort heat pumps, you have a good starting point. Let's reduce the dependence on gas. In the UK, still some families are burning oil, especially if you're in remote areas. So they need to switch to hopefully ground source heat pumps or solar and wind. But then we have also in the US with the Inflation Reduction Act, there are three high level areas of stimulus. One is to build out the onshore offshore wind and and more solar, but very importantly, the offering of heat pumps. The second area is more efficient buildings, i.e. replace old heating ventilation equipment, have energy efficient glazing in buildings, insulation materials, better roofing, better LED lighting, etc. And then the third one is the grid upgrade. We can talk about renewables, we can talk about electric vehicles, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to take the electricity onto the grid the build out of charging stations is another very important drive here. So you need to upgrade the grid, but also provide charging stations for the hydrogen transportation opportunity. Then we have the CHIPS Act, which means the onshore, the technology that have been outsourced to the Far East before. So that is all coming back. When you build factories in the US for building digital equipment and products, you need to do that in an efficient way so that we can invest in companies helping to reduction of water, electricity and energy. And then we have the Jobs Act. When you build out infrastructure, you need to be able to have the staff and the quality of the staff. That's a broad range of sectors and activities. I mean, from an investor's perspective, which type of companies are accessing these interesting and exciting opportunities? We focus on these companies that are the solution providers that are helping that transition to a more sustainable economies. Let's give a few examples. Energy efficient air conditioning and heating ventilation companies. They can see their order books really filling up. They can see that there is this need to replace a 10-year-old, 12-year-old 
12-year-old piece of equipment with a more efficient one. Although the lifespan might still be another 10 years, the savings you can make today on replacing it earlier are significant. Energy efficiency through building energy efficiency is very low hanging fruit. If we talk about industries, a lot of water and steam and energy is used when you make products or when you have factories running. We can invest in companies that have very efficient steam systems. Then you go to the electrification of the transportation sector. The companies that make the crucial components to make a hybrid car or a full electric car. And then when hydrogen comes out, there are some industrial gas companies that have good knowledge technologies to help you to go from the generation of hydrogen into the engine for the truck or for the shipping. And then on the food area as well, we can invest in companies that provide technology, software and hardware for farmers. A lot of savings to be made from a farmer perspective. I mentioned resource efficiency. We can invest in companies that help to recycle, reuse, compost waste. We have waste coming out of the electrification of the transportation sector, all those batteries or just the the chargeable batteries. On the water value chain, we can invest in companies testing water, monitoring the water within the water value chain, be more conscious with the use of water Uh, when we have smart irrigation. We can talk for hours about the opportunity set. It's very broad and we're very excited about continuing to see the growth, the investment opportunities, the margin development of all these companies because they produce products and environmental solutions that are needed, that have a good, strong demand and therefore also profitability and strong cash generating uh, characteristics. You've talked us through the whole process with the universe, the drivers, the policies that are leading to the expansion of the investment universe and the type of companies that are operating and taking advantage of these opportunities. The last question is, do you at Impacts report on the impact of the portfolio companies and what sort of methodology and metrics do you use to measure the company's impact? Impex is one of the pioneers on that front and still one of the few that provides that. So once we build a portfolio of companies that I just highlighted, we can then say, what does it really mean? Where do these companies help? We have developed a methodology that says, let's look at the scope one, two, and three emissions of all the companies in the portfolio. That gives you a certain number. Then we're going to say, how do they avoid CO2? We can deduct the CO2 avoidance from the emissions and we get a net CO2 avoidance number as an example. On the next level, we say how much water is provided by companies in the portfolio. And the other number we provide is how much renewable energy is generated by some of the companies in the portfolio. Then lastly, we have really looked at how much waste has been reused, recycled and avoided to go into the environment. And we have a report, it's called Impact at Impacts. It's on the website, the explained the methodology and the outcomes. Well, Ubert, thank you very much. You've given us a very thorough overview of uh, in the environmental markets and, and the opportunities that the transition to a sustainable economy is creating for investors. Thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome, Andrew. And it was a delight to explain our investment philosophy. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Talking Heads. If you'd like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out Viewpoint, our website for investment insights at viewpoint.bnpparibar-am.com. We recommend subscribing to Talking Heads on your favorite podcast channel. You'll receive your podcast episodes every Monday afternoon. If you like the podcast, please leave us a positive review and a nice rating. You've been listening to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast with me, Andy Craig, and Hubert Arts, Deputy Chief Investment Officer for Listed Equities at Impacts Asset Management and Senior Portfolio Manager. Thanks for listening today. Take care and we'll be back again next week. This presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the...